I'm going to ask you this afternoon to open up your Bible to three portions of Scripture. We are going to be in Hebrews chapter 10, Matthew chapter 16, and 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 10, Matthew chapter 16, and 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Hebreos capítulo 10, Mateo 16, y Primera de Corintios capítulo 12. While you guys get there, I just want to tell you that uh, this was a very special week that just passed for us. Um, last Tuesday, the 10th, was Rebecca Rose's birthday. I appreciate um, all of you that uh, made it, took the time to message us somehow to wish her a happy birthday. I, I appreciate the, the, the gifts. Uh, but I do want to tell you that um, the, the, the greatest gift that you can give any member of my household or myself is to keep us in your prayers. That's, that's the greatest gift. Like, like, we don't ask anything more than that. If you would keep my, my household, my family, uh, my wife, my kids, and myself in your prayers, that, that's all the gift you ever, ever have to feel like you need to give the pastor or someone in my household. In these days, um, our students are going back to school, Pueblo's Royal Christian School. Tomorrow, our students go back to school. Um, some of you uh, may be going back to school this week or the following week. And I like during this time to touch on a few fundamentals of our faith, some of the uh, basics, beliefs that we have in our faith and, and why we do what we do. Um, and today I'm going to touch on the church. Why do we come to church? And as I was preparing my message, I remember that there was this, this, this young guy and he was, uh, uh, you know, it was Sunday and he hadn't gotten up for church and his mom was listening. She's like, man, este muchacho hasn't gotten up. So she goes up there and she knocks on the door and she's like, ya despertate, mijo. And he acts like he's asleep, right? He doesn't want to get up for church. So, you know, she's like, ah. she opens the door and he's like hiding under the covers. And she's like, boy, you better get up and go to church. Today's Sunday. You need to get up and go to church. He's like, no, nah, ma, I don't, don't want to go to church. And she's like, man, what do you mean you don't want to go to church? And he's like, no, nah, I don't, don't want to go to church. He's like, man, I go to church and people make faces at me. Some people are rude to me. Um, you know, I always feel like they're talking about me. I don't, I don't want to go to church. And she's like, boy, let me, you need to go to church. And he's like, a ver, ma, a ver, a ver. why do I need to go to church? And she goes, I'll give you two reasons why you need to go to church. And he says, why? And she goes, first of all, you're 40 years old. Man up and go to church, all right? <laughs> Second of all, you're the pastor, right? So you better go to church, right? <laughs> Anyways, why do we come to church? All right. um, uh, funny enough, last service, um, a representative of, of uh, Commissioner Adrian Garcia came by and, and, and gave a proclamation to the church for um, the, the benefits that we've given to um, our community from rental assistance to um, uh, food, um, food drives to COVID, being a COVID testing site, a, a COVID um, vaccination site, and, and, and a few other things that we've done. Um, and, and I was reminded that when everything started happening with the pandemic, with the virus, I had said, I'm like, well, I'm not closing church, so they close us down. And, um, and so we were taking precautions because I believe that we should walk in faith, but faith with wisdom. That's why we have the book of wisdom, Proverbs, in the middle of the Bible. And so we were already disinfecting the benches. People were already wearing masks. I started preaching Saturday night, what I was preaching on Sundays, just to spread the people out upon, uh, amongst multiple services. Um, uh, people were self-quarantining, right? Um, and uh, I remember it was a, a Monday where, um, uh, sure enough, a county official came and said, hey, you guys have to shut down. Someone reported y'all that y'all having large gatherings. And, um, and I was like, no, we were still not going to shut down. And, um, and then uh, the next day, uh, Tuesday, was when the county officially announced that churches had to shut down. And I was like, okay, well, they're going to shut us all down. Then I'll shut down. Well, you're just trying to shut me down. I'm not going to shut down. And so since they announced it, well, we we're like, okay, we'll, we'll stop. And about four weeks later is when uh, Governor Abbott announced that churches were essential, that it was essential for the believers to come together and pray um, and, and, and uh, comfort and encourage each other. And so churches became essential. But we saw during those four weeks, uh, four or five weeks of where we weren't able to congregate, where we were not able to assemble in, in, in any amount, the, the need of the church um, there, there was a, a, an uptake in, in, in um, alcohol and drug abuse. There was an uptake in, in um, abuses happening in the family, uh, spousal abuse, uh, child abuse. There was an uptake, in, and we're still dealing with a lot of people suffering from depression and anxiety from being um, in quarantine, being by themselves, right? 
And, um, and I remember the, the very first service, it was a Mother's Day when we had service. I, I remember it was like, like, like taking a, 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 a gasp of air. Like people came back to church and like, like they inhaled, like, oh, like, like I could breathe again, right? You know, as believers in Jesus Christ, there's a promise. Jesus said, I, I'm going to destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it up. In other words, kill me and I'll resurrect. They crucified him and three days later he resurrected. But there's another word that Jesus gave and his other word was one day I'm going to return, right? One day I'm coming back. And let me tell you that every day that passes puts us one day closer to meeting Christ, puts us one day closer to the return of Christ. And Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25 says, and let us not neglect our meeting together, right? Man, I just, this pen totally blew up in my hands. It says, let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near, right? Let us not neglect our meeting together. That, that's the assembly of the saints. That's church. That's coming together in Jesus' name. Because this is where we encourage one another. You know, if it was just me and, um, me and, and Victor, man, we, we, we would, we would um, discourage each other, right? But because it's us, we encourage each other, right? Um, like if you just showed up, you'd be like, man, que triste. There was only one person at church. You go, to, you go back home and someone's like, how was church? Be like, man, sad. It was just pastor and I, right? Or who knows, maybe I don't even show up. You'd just be like, it was just me, right? You know, like that. <laughs> But because we are here, it's encouraging, right? It's encouraging. And we must encourage each other all the more as every day that passes puts us one day closer to the return of the Lord. Meet me in Matthew chapter 16. And in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, Jesus speaks about the church. And Jesus says these words, Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Now I say to you that you are Peter, and Peter's name meant rock, right? So Jesus says, look, you're, Peter is the original rock, you know, like that, right? He, so, <laughs> so Jesus tells him, I say to you, you're Peter, you're rock. It's more like a pebble, right? He goes, you're rock. But then Jesus speaks of, him, of himself, and he says, and upon this rock, I will build my church. And all the powers of hell will not conquer it. Right? The powers of hell, as some of your Bibles may say, the gates of Hades. Right? That's how it says in Spanish, las puertas del Hades, the gates of Hades, the power of hell are coming against the church, has been coming against the church. But 2,000 years have passed since Jesus spoke these words, and the church is still strong. Why? Because it's built upon the rock, not Peter but it's built upon the rock, Jesus Christ. He's a solid rock. He's our foundation, all right? Now remember that when Matthew writes his gospel, he writes it in the Greek, because that was, Greek was kind of like English of its day, where people all over the world are, are learning to speak and read in English, because it's sort of the, the, the language of, of commerce, I guess. And so uh, 2,000 years ago, Greek was, was the, the language. And so when Matthew wrote his gospel, he wrote it in Greek. And the word that's used when Jesus says church, right, I will build my church, is the word ecclesia, right, ecclesia. From that word ecclesia in Spanish, we get the word iglesia, right? Ecclesia, Iglesia, Iglesia Spanish for church, right? Which 99.9% .9 of y'all should know that. And if you don't, I'm very disappointed. I'm going to give Spanish classes after service. What is Ecclesia? Ecclesia, one meaning is the, the called ones, the ones that are called, the called out ones. But it was a, a meeting. It was an assembly of, of citizens that were called out. Right? They weren't just called out, but they were called out to a meeting. It's, the, it's a meeting, an assembly of the called out ones. And when Jesus talks about the church, his followers, believers in Jesus Christ, 
Uh, you'll hear me often say the assembly of the saints. The saints are the called out ones. Um, or, or the congregation of the saints, the congregation of the believers. That's what uh, assembly, that's what uh, ecclesia means. That's what iglesia means. That's what church means. It means the assembly, the congregation of the believers. Church aren't these four walls right here. These four walls is not what makes up the church. We are the church, all right? You and I, we're the church, all right? Not, not these four walls. We saw that during quarantine, right? When, when quarantine happened and we were not able to congregate in these four walls, we never stopped being a church. We continued being a church, all right? I, I, one of our very, very, our very first church building, you know, this year we celebrate 40, our 40th year anniversary, but our first church building was an office that my, my dad rented to start the church, uh, right, and that building still exists right across the street from, uh, right behind a Walmart over on, on Shaver. And, um, and, but that, that particular office where we were at, I remember it caught on fire, right? It, it caught on fire and it burnt. That did not stop the church because the church is not a building. The church is us the assembly of the saints, right? The congregation, the believers of Christ who come together. If, if, we, if we were meeting in a park, we would be the church. If we were meeting in my, in my backyard, we would be the church. If we were meeting at your house, nobody said amen. That's messed up. We would be the church, right? Like that. Y'all don't want to clean or what? No, I'm just kidding, right? Like that. Right. But I, I want to teach you, like, in, in the church, in, in the early days of the church, um, they met in houses, in, in the book of, uh, when you read the book of Acts, many of those churches, they, they met in houses. Uh, later, they were persecuted, and so they met in the catacombs, and the catacombs were sort of like the, the, the graveyards for the Romans, and, and none, nobody wanted to go down there, so the church would go down there, they would worship, because they were like, nobody's going to bother, bother us here, because they were being persecuted. Uh, but, but they even met in houses. And, um, and when we talk about church, there's, there's two main churches, there's two main things you need to understand. One, there's the church, all right? is the body of Christ, a 2,000-year history, believers all over the world. Right now, people woke up in Asia to go to church. People woke up in Africa to go to church. People woke up in Europe to go to church. People woke up in, in North America, uh, Central America, and South America, all over the world. People woke up today to go to church. That is the body of Christ. And then there is what we call the local church. La Iglesia del Pueblo, Pueblo's Church, is a local church. Um, I, I was, when I think about these things, I think about the history here in Pasadena. Forty years ago, there were four Hispanic churches in Pasadena, and one of them was closed. Um, the kid that was playing the piano during worship, uh, uh, Juju, um, his grandfather uh, was a pastor of one of the three open churches here in, um, in Pasadena, and, and his father now pastors that church, uh, uh, Pastor Abel Abdiel Villarreal from um, Bethel Church, not too far from here. And um, today, there are over 150 Hispanic churches in Pasadena, right? All of us together make up the body of Christ, but individually, we are expressions of that body. The, we are local churches, right? And so, so Pueblo's church is a local church in expression. I believe that your house is a type of church, right? And I believe that, that you will see tremendous things happen in your household when the man of the house, the husband of the house, takes the role of, of head of the house, takes the role of being the pastor of his house, being, being the, the high, the, being the priest of his house. Sort of, sort of like what, what Joshua says, right? Real famous. Some of you might even have this there at the door of your house. He said, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And when the man takes that role of saying like, you know what? Yo me voy a encargar de esto. I'm going to be in charge of this. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. I'm going to make sure my family goes to church. I'm going to make sure my family is serving the Lord. I'm, I'm going to make sure that things that do not honor God, not in my house, right? Let me tell you, you will begin to see God's blessings over your home, all right? Now, I want to make sure that we understand that though we are blessed with the facilities that we have here at 1600 Pasadena Boulevard, our emphasis is not this building. Our emphasis is not this building. Um, you know, th th this isn't like in the Old Testament when they had the tabernacle in the temple and you couldn't even enter here and you had to do that. Like, like, no, like, 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 thank God for the church. I mean, I'd rather be in here in AC than being out there in the heat, right? You know, thank God for this building. But, and, and, and thank God that we don't have earthquakes here. But if we had an earthquake and Monday, 
this building fell, that would not stop the church. If, if the gates of hell can't stop the church, the building falling shouldn't stop the church. Because the church is not this building. Now, I know traditionally in our culture, we see, we pass by this building and we we'll say, oh, look, there's a church, right? But really, church is, is this right here, what's happening right here, all right? Is, is the people coming together, the assembly of the saints, the assembly, the congregating of the called ones. Oh. So I'm going to ask you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So, so that's the church. The church is an assembly of citizens, an assembly of Christians gathered for worship, sharing, and teaching. But what does it mean to be a part of the church? What does it mean to be a part of the church? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27 says, All of you together are Christ's body. We, us, all of us together, we are the body of Christ. And each of you is a part of it. All right? We are the body of Christ. Each one is a part of it. Uh, some Bibles say each one of you is a member of that body. And that's a, that's a better word. I like that better. That we are members of the body of Christ. If we are all members of the same body, no one is more important than anyone else. Right? I, I, I may have a certain amount of authority as pastor, and because of that, I carry resp responsibility. Right? But I'm not more holy than you. That's why I try and teach you to pray. That's why I try and teach you to read the Bible. That's why I teach you to pray for your family, pray for those who are sick. Uh, because your prayers, uh, uh, you know, it's not like my prayers are going to get to God and yours are not. If you are a child of God, your prayers will get to God just like my prayers will get to God. All right? I will join you in prayer, but my prayers do not supersede your prayers because we are all part of the body of Christ. We are all members of it. All right. And there's no member that is insignificant. No member is insignificant. Maybe you think, well, pastor, I just come to church and I leave. You know, I'm not really that important. Oh, there is no member that's insignificant. Think of your body. Think of your whole body. Think of what, what's the most insignificant uh, member of your body, part of your body, right? Maybe you would say my pinky toe on my left foot. Some of you would say, Pastor, I'll be honest, it's so insignificant, I don't even wash it. I just, you know, the soap and shampoo that comes down. But yeah, I, Gloria a Dios, it's clean. You know, like that. Right. Not that important. A ver, come in here. Let me cut it off with some scissors. I know, pastor. But no, it wasn't that important. Maybe some, some of you would say, man, a strand of hair. Like a strand of hair ain't that important. And you know, I, I'll tell you what, that, that when I was younger and I would, you know, uh, wash my face, brush my teeth, wet my hair in the sink to comb it. And I would see like one or two hairs fall in the sink. And I was like, oh, big deal. I got a lot of them. Now I don't say big deal. I got a lot of them. Like... <laughs> Now I cry, I mourn that one or two hairs that would fall every time I would comb my hair over the sink, you know. Uh, yesterday I was at a funeral, and when we went to the burial site, I went to my truck, and I grabbed um, my hat, and I, and I put on my hat, and there was a, a brother next to me from our church, and, and he's, he's like totally bald, so he went over there in the shade with me, and I told him, man, you know, I learned a long time ago, I need to wear a hat because my protection that I used to have no longer exists, you know, like that. You think it's insignificant, it isn't. The word in the Greek for members, which many of your Bibles have members, is the word melos. And from melos, we get the word melody, right? Melodia. And, um, you know, back in the day, we used to sing like a bunch of coritos, like, I poder, poder, sin igual poder. And, and so whoever played the guitar, it was real simple. They just had to play three chords. And, and we, we would say uh, primera, segunda y tercera, like first, second, and third. Like just give me first, second, and third, right? And um, I don't even know where that came from. But that was just sort of universal. Didn't matter where you went. You know, some, I mean, they would say like, give me me, give, give, give me, give me G, give me E or whatever. And then primera, segunda, y tercera. So you can play pretty much any song anywhere like that. I remember one time I was, I was singing and I told, I had to lead a worship. I told Julio, hey man, uh, give me G, give me G. So he gives me G3 and I'm like, mm -hmm. no, 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 give me A, give me A, give, dame la, dame la, ra. and I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm like, no, 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 you know what, man, give, give me, give me E, dame me, dame me. He's like, three, I'm like, mm. and I'm like, sabes que, dame las todas, you know, just give them all, you know, at one time, like, I, I can't figure this out, you know, like that. But uh, anyways, we used to have this music teacher and this guy was a musical genius, kid you not, musical genius. He'd play all the instruments, Raul Marin. And um, if he didn't know the instrument, give him 15 minutes, he would play it. And he knew music, he knew theory, he would write compositions. He was amazing. And um, he would get after us because we would, we would, in those days, the music was very basic, you know, three chords. 
and he would tell me, y y there are 12 semitones. Like if you look at the piano, uh, you, all the white notes and black, black notes, there's 12 of them, right? There's 12 of them. There's different octaves, but there's, see, I know a little bit about music myself. But anyways, if you can't tell. And so he would say, there's 12 semitones. You guys are only using three, but God gave us 12. Therefore, you have to use all of them. And we're like, man, we're not all geniuses like you, you know? I mean, I'm barely at two plus two, and he wanted me to figure out Y equals MX plus B. I mean, that's a different story, right? And so we were like, that's true though. The melody, and he would play the, like he was all over the piano. You know, like our piano player was like, ding, ding, ding. he was like, ding, ding. he was like all over it, right? And um, <laughs> that reminded me of another joke, but I'll share it another time. And um, <laughs> I'll tell ya. So anyways, this is true story. I found my cousin's church that um, this, this guy who's like a professional guitar player came. He was like a jazz guitarist, right? And he came, and so he sang for the offering, and man, he's like all over the guitar, you know, like, así como Jerry, you know, like just like all over the guitar, right? So after church, a kid went to the church guitarist, and they're like, hey, man, why is it that when that guy played the guitar, he's like all over the guitar, but when you play the guitar, you're only in one place. And so the church guitarist told the kid, he goes, ah, oh, man, he goes, it's because he's still looking for it. I found it a long time ago, you know? <laughs> Anyways, all those notes, all the, all the strings and frets on the guitar and the bass and, and the, the black and white keys, melody, right? Harmony. And, 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 and that's how the church should operate. We're one body, different members, individual members, but we are one body, melody. And, and I'll tell you, like one of my initiatives, something that's a burden on my heart, is for us to even work with other churches. And I, and I try and look for how can I be a blessing to other churches because I believe that we should work melody and harmony with other believers, right? Notice what um, verse uh, 28 says. Verse 28 says, just the very uh, first part, it says, here are some parts, here are some of the parts God has appointed, right? Just that part right there where it says, God has appointed for the church, all right? We're going to read that part right there again. God has appointed for the church. I'm going to tell you something that I believe wholeheartedly that many of you are here. As a matter of fact, I believe that the majority of you are here because God has appointed it, right? It's not coincidence that you're here. Well, I came because my, 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 my wife made me come. I came because, you know, well, it's Sunday. That's what we do. I came because someone invited me. No, no, no. You're here because God has appointed. Notice it says some of the parts. What are the parts? We are the parts. As individuals, we are the parts. God has appointed for the church. God has appointed you to be here. Let me tell you, we need you here, right? We need you here. I will feel horrible if my pinky got cut off. Worst day of my life was when I, one of the worst days of my life was when I broke my ankle, right? The, one of the worst moments of my life was when they took off my boot and I saw my foot hanging next to my leg, right? Horrible to not have all my members working in harmony in my body, right? But when everything got straightened out, there was harmony. We need you here. We need you to understand that you play a role here. You being here is an encouragement to other people. Your tithes and your offering help to take the gospel through radio or wherever else to places that the majority of us were never going to get to, right? When, when quarantine happened and we were not able to come together, like let's say Pueblo, Pueblo Church, we didn't even skip a beat. We already were on radio. We were already on social media. Everything was already bought and in place so that we, we, we could just continue ministering, right? You are needed here, right? And, and I believe the campaign that we've been praying for, 2,600 souls here at La Iglesia del Pueblo by 2026, you play the role in that. It's you telling your family members about Jesus. It's you telling your friends at work about Jesus. It's you telling your, your friends, your compadre, your comadre about Jesus. It's you praying for your one, sowing in them, telling them about Jesus. You are needed. No one here is insignificant. And don't ever let anyone tell you that you're not important in church because you are. Right? Members, melos, melody, all of us working together. Verse 20 says... Yes, there are many parts, but only one body, 21. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. 
And the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. Right? That, that would be ludicrous. Right? For the eyes to be like, oh, I don't need you. Come on, get no. For the feet to be like, oh, I don't need you. Well, what do you mean? Right? <laughs> I don't know what I would do. I, you know, sometimes I, 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 I play with um, Rebecca, and she's like, you know, I'm trying to get her attention, trying to get her attention, and she doesn't listen. I'm like, Rebecca, Rebecca, I'm trying to dress her. And, and, um, and you know, so, man, you know, you know what gets everybody's attention? You know what gets everybody's attention? A fight. Man, there's a fight going on. I remember in high school, there was, a fi- there was a, man, there was a fight on the other side of school, and everybody would run. I'm like, how did the people in front know that there's a fight in the back of the school? Like, like I don't know, pero yo ahí también andan entre la bola, right? You know, like, everybody go to the fight like that. So sometimes I'm trying to dress Rebecca, and she's acting up. And so I'll tell her, se están peleando, se están peleando. And then she'll look, and I'll be like, mis dedos, my fingers, right? Se están peleando, they're fighting, my fingers are fighting. You know, like that. And she'll look, she'll be, you know, she's like, ah, you know. I don't know why a fight gets our attention, but, you know. But wouldn't it be crazy if, if my fingers really were fighting? I'd have to see some type of doctor over that, right? Melody, harmony, members, different parts, but one body, and more importantly, the body of Christ. What's the glue, then, that keeps us together? What's the glue that keeps us in harmony? What's the glue that, that keeps us like, like, like a melody, everybody working together? What's the glue that helps us to be a good member of the body of Christ, a good member of the local church? Chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians, verse 1. If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others... I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, I would be nothing. No one is insignificant in the church, but if you don't love, you are nothing. Those are my words. That's the Bible. The glue that keeps us together, the glue that keeps a church a church is that we would love one another. Jesus said this, this is how they're going to know that you're my disciples, that you would love one another, right? So love isn't this feeling like, oh, well, I feel like it, I don't feel like it. Like love is action. If Jesus is commanding us to love, that's action. So what is the action? The action is to put others first. The action is to do what is best for others, right? The action is to put my neighbor first. The action is to do what is best for my neighbor. I'm about to give you all some free marriage counseling, right? A lot of couples are having issues and problems. I'm about to solve it for you right now, all right? But it's one of those things easier said than done, but I'm about to solve it, all right? Put your spouse first, right? Put their needs first. Serve them, all right? Husband, put your wife first, serve her, right? Love her. Wife, put your husband first, serve him, love him. Now, they might look differently. Uh, Most men, they just want respect, and they want to come to a house of peace, right? They don't want to come to drama, right? Uh, A lot of women, they they want flowers, they want hugs, or or, or whatever it is, right? But you got to figure that out. You, 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 You dated them. I hope you figured them out before you married them. So you already know, but, but the thing is, do that. Like if the husband and wife both are doing that, you won't be bugging me for marriage counseling. I can tell you that much. Just, that was free. I'm not going to charge for that. All right. I'm going to finish with this, all right? It's just important that we be part of the church, all right? We be part of the body of Christ. We be part of a local church, which is, which is the expression of being part of the body of Christ. And I'll tell you that many times here, right here, in this, this area right here, many times I have prayed with people who want to give their life to Jesus, and I never emphasize that they need to come to like Iglesia del Pueblo or Pueblo's Church. I always tell them, find a church. If it's here, praise the Lord. But if there's one close to your house, go to that church. Find a church that is Christ-centered. Find a church that is preaching the gospel of Jesus. Find a church that is, that is worshiping God, all right? And um, find a, it's important that we would be a part united to the body of Christ. We cannot say, I love Christ, but I hate his body, right? A lot of men are in trouble for that. I'm just kidding, right? You know, I love Christ, 
Therefore, I must love the body of Christ, right? And so we must love the church. This is, this is very important. How much does Jesus love the church? Let me, before I say that, let me answer that question. Let me tell you. As a believer in Jesus, you have the mind of Christ, okay? As a believer in Jesus Christ, you have the mind of Christ. And you have the promise of the Holy Spirit. That means that the Spirit of Christ is in you. As a believer in Jesus, you have the mind of Christ, you have the Holy Spirit, and as a Christian, you should be a follower of Christ, right? So how much does Jesus Christ love the church? Let me land this plane right now. The wheels are out. We're about to hit the ground. How much does Jesus love the church? First of all, Jesus came and established the church. We read it in Matthew, right? Second of all, Jesus died for the church. Jesus was crucified for the church. Third of all, right now, Jesus is sitting on the right-hand side of the Father, interceding, advocating. Guess who Jesus is interceding for? Guess who Jesus is advocating for? He is interceding for, he is advocating for the church. And then finally, one day and one day soon, as we read in Hebrews, Jesus will return for the church. Let me tell you, it's important that you would be a part of the church, the body of Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask you in this moment to close your Bibles and if possible, bow your heads, close your eyes and, and start thanking God that you came today. So just, just start giving him things that you came today to church. Dele gracias que viniste hoy. Thank you, Father, that I came to church. Thank you, Father, that I came to the assembly of the saints. Thank you, Father, that I came to the congregation. I came to the meeting of where we're put in, where more than two or three gathered in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you, Father, I came to the, to the meeting, to the assembly of people coming together to praise you and worship you and exalt you. Ask God to give you a love for the church, for the body of Christ. Say, Father, give me a love, a passion for the church, for the body of Christ. Father, give me a love, give me a passion for the church, for the body of Christ, for fellow believers in Jesus. Ask God to help you to be a good member of the body. Say, Father, help me to be a good member of the body of Christ. Help me to be a good member of the church. Father, help me to honor you by being a good member of the body of Christ. Help me by being a good member of the church. Then ask God to help you to do your part in the church. Father, help me to do my part in the church. The Holy Spirit gives us gifts. The Holy Spirit gives us fruit. The Holy Spirit gives us wisdom, gives us abilities, gives us skills. Help us, Father, to use whatever you've given us to benefit the church, to be a blessing to the church. Bless me that I will be a blessing to others. Bless me that I will be a blessing to others. Help me to serve the church. For some of you, that means praying for the church regularly. Help me, Father, to pray for the church regularly. For some of you, that means praying for believers that, that are in another country. Father, help us to pray for our brothers that are serving you, especially in those difficult regions like China, or in the Middle East. For some of you, that's giving your tithes and your offering. Father, help me to learn to give my tithes, to depend on you, to trust you, give my tithes and my offering. For some of you, it may be serving in, in, a, in a physical capacity. Father, help me. If I know you've been dealing with me. Help me to have that desire to serve. Rather, it's as a, a, a Sunday school teacher or as someone that's taking care of cars in the parking lot or a greeter or, or wherever the church needs me, Father. Help me to have that desire to serve. Now, let me pray for you. Father God, I put Pueblo's church in your hands. I pray that you would bless them, that you would protect them, that you would strengthen them, Father. That your name would be honored and glorified in their lives. I thank you that they came to church today. I thank you that they received your word. And I pray, Father, that you would help us, bless us as a local church, as La Iglesia del Pueblo and Pueblo's church, that we would be a blessing and work in harmony and melody with the body of Christ, the church, the church of Christ. It is in Jesus' name that we pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord some.